my mother started me out uh, at a very young age. I remember sitting on the stairs uh, to the basement where we had the f furnace that we heated our house with sawdust burning. And a friend of mine was there and she lectured us. I think she'd heard, I'm not sure, but I think she'd heard one of us use the word nigger. But for whatever, she lectured us and she told us in no uncertain terms, you never, never use that word. She didn't tell us at that time that our great, great aunt was Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote the abolitionist book, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin. But I had that drilled into me from a very early age, and it had, a, it had an effect, a lifelong effect. It also had the effect of, my, of many things that my mother said and did, and my father too. My father brought a young man when he was the prosecuting attorney, and there was a young man there as a runaway, and he brought him down and installed him in a little cabin we had there on the property, which I thought now I think was a quite a dangerous thing for him to do because my sister was about 10 years old at the time. Uh, and I think that was a little risky, but he did it. And But I lost getting named the citizen of the year by the, the school principal when I was in the eighth grade and I was student body president and so on. Uh, it's a rare act of charity on her part that she was going to have me awarded that because I'd gotten elected uh, student body president by in the speech, the competitive speeches of the candidates, I said to her, Mrs. Lewis, there are those who say you are old fashioned. And that was a revolution uh, rebellious <laughs> remark in, in 1954 or whatever the year that was, uh, to say that right in the face of our conservative, uh, somewhat uh, punishment-oriented, uh, good, solid principle. So there are those who say you were old-fashioned. They practically carried me out of there on their shoulders after that. <laughs> I got elected. But anyway, at the end of the year, they were going to give away the Citizen of the Year. And they had chosen me, I was told later. But on the day, way to school, the last day of school, I decided to have a little fun. And I got a jar of Limburger uh, cheese spread. And I got on the bus and put that on uh, a seat. And then then they, this people would get on the bus, they'd start to sit down on a seat, and we'd say, don't sit there! And then they'd lunge back to the one where the cheese was and get it on their clothing. And when, that didn't go over well when it was reported and we got to school, and I didn't get the award. But a guy named Jack Wood did, and I've always been glad he got it rather than me, because that poor guy, uh, about two years after that, uh, his house burned down, and his parents' very humble house burned down and with him in it. And so he did have that wonderful thing that he'd richly deserved. He was a sweet, kind man that everybody loved Jack Wood. But uh, humble people. When I was uh, probably, I don't know, 12 or something, maybe 14, my folks went on a trip and they said, son, we didn't get all the corn picked and we're not going to be back uh, in time to pick it. It's going to be uh, too ripe, overripe, and not taste all that great. So if you want to pick it while we're gone, give it away, please do. So I picked a box of corn. I must have been 16 because I drove, now that I think about it, I drove down to the train station to take it down to the ho what we call the hobo jungle, jungle, which, well, hobos were living there. And I had been acquainted with that uh, habitation because I used to go down and there was a a, a big bin uh, structure there that had coal in it and the pigeons roosted up high in it and I would take my 22 and shoot a couple of pigeons and take them down to those guys and they'd cook them in a co coffee can over an open fire and they were very grateful for that. Uh, but this day I got down there with the corn and up the tracks comes uh, two guys, one of them limping and as soon as they got close enough I could see there was blood all the way down his pant leg. So I piled him in the car, hauled him up to the hospital, and they took him in, uh, which that hospital had a bad reputation for refusing homeless people, but they took him in and sewed that up. They'd gotten in a fight in the hobo jungle and somebody had taken a knife and sliced his leg pretty badly. But I always loved to stick up for 
humble people, homeless people. My mom and dad, uh, if homeless people would come up from the railroad track, travelers, hobos, whatever you want to call them, and ask for a little food, they'd get, they'd feed them. And there were all kinds of things like that in my childhood with my parents believing that we should help the disadvantaged.